Walt Drobo, or commonly nicknamed the Moose for Musa, was born and raised in Musa, Connecticut. His parents immigrated from Yugoslavia, particularly the region of Mostar. In Connecticut, his father worked in a textile mill and also helped run the Connecticut family farm. The house Walt Drobo grew up on is One Dropo Drive, named after the famous athlete. Now, the brothers did end up leaving after their college career, but the Drobo family stayed in the house for quite some time. Walt Dropo's baseball career began with simple pickup sandlot games, which he would often play with his older brother, Milton Dropo, and his younger drop brother, George Dropo. Walt Dropo's career continued to progress when he attended Plainfield High School. There, he participated in a variety of sports, from baseball to basketball to even football, where his older brother Milton was team captain at the time. While Tropo went on to carry on his success to the University of Connecticut, where he once again played baseball, basketball, and football. He ended up being the highest scoring player in his time at the university in basketball, and even remains as one of the highest scoring men's basketball players today. He accredited his success in the sport to his large size, measuring in at 6 feet 5 inches and weighing 220 pounds. For his phenomenal athletics performance at the university, he was even accredited with 12 other athletes from the school in 2007 for athletic achievement. A promising baseball, basketball, and football player, Dropo's college career was interrupted by military service in November 1942. He was stationed at Fort Devens, Massachusetts, where he continued to be a star athlete with the Fort Devens Reception Center teams. He was later stationed in Europe as a combat engineer in Europe, seeing time in France, Italy, and even Germany. After his service, Walt went back to finish his career at UConn Connecticut College. Walt Drobo's success at UConn led to many athletic opportunities being presented to him. Walt Drobo was a first-round draft pick of the Providence Steam Rollers in the 1947 Pro Basketball Draft and was also drafted as an end in the ninth round of the 1946 NFL Draft by the Chicago Bears. However, despite those two professional opportunities, Walt Drobo signed a professional baseball amateur free contract with the Boston Red Sox in 1947, having felt that baseball was his true passion and that he would only succeed in football due to his immense size. Walt Drobo debuted his career with the Boston Red Sox on April 19, 1949, and in 11 games he batted a .146. It wasn't until 1950, as a 27-year-old rookie first baseman with the Red Sox, Dropo enjoyed one of the greatest rookie seasons in Major League history, leading the American League in runs batted in 144 and total bases 326 while batting a .322 and hitting 34 home runs total. He was second in the American League in home runs, slugging percentage .583, and he even had 70 extra base hits. Due to his amazing success, Walt Drobo managed to finish 6th in the American League MVP award and earn an American League Rookie of the Year award, beating out the likely candidate Whitey Ford, who was the pitcher for the New York Yankees at the time. He also made his first and only All-Style appearance in the Major Leagues. Of course, this success would only last for so long. In a Major League game in 1952, Dropo landed on and fractured his right wrist. While he did manage to make a recovery, Dropo would never have a season quite like his 1950s campaign with the Red Sox. After one plus season with the Boston Red Sox, Walt Dropo was inevitably traded to the Detroit Tigers on June 3, 1952. After he was traded to Detroit, Walt Dropo tied a major league record that still stands today when he collected 12 hits in consecutive trips to the plate and during that hitting streak, he also tied another major league record that is still in place today when he totaled 15 base hits in a four game span. The star had proven that even a wrist fracture wouldn't keep him down. Walt 
while Dropo continued on his 13 long career, where he was also traded on to the Chicago White Sox. In his 13 year major league career, Walt Dropo hit 270 batting average, playing in 1,288 games for the Boston Red Sox, the Detroit Tigers, the Chicago White Sox, and even the Cincinnati Red Legs. The athlete had also a total of 152 home runs until he retired from his baseball career in 1963. He then went on to work for his brother Milton in the firework business, where he spent the rest of his working life. How do you know Walt Dropo? Alright, I met him through his younger brother George because he was vice principal here. Yep. My partner. Yeah. Okay. He actually hired me back in 73, 74. I was playing ball at Eastern. He used to referee my basketball game, but it didn't work. When I applied for a job here, I then him in the hallway the old school. That's yeah. why I was there explaining to him. And you certified in English, I said yes, and I thought so. Huh, that's really cool. I right, now I met Walter through John. So we go over the house a lot. And we yeah, home. Home. We'd see each other. And then when I started working for the fireworks company, Walter was always there for So we worked together. Really cool. So like when you talked to Walt, like what kind of a person was he in the <laughs> Of the three brothers, he's probably the friendliest. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. He was always he always treated everybody the same. It didn't matter if you were a star or just a Joe Small. Yeah. He was very, very warm to people. They all had big names. <laughs> yeah, I right. mean, uh, whenever we saw his, he was, when he played for the Red Sox, he played with a guy called Maurice McNutt, which is my last name. No relation to me. But they didn't call him Maurice, they called him Mick. That's what they called me, Mickey McNutt. Yeah. So he used to see me and he used to go, oh, my Irish friend. <laughs> Meaning his, yeah. uh, his buddy, but I had the same name. Yeah. yeah. So that's why he signs everything he does to me, my Irish friend. You know? oh, yeah, but okay. he would, he, he, he come over and he'd give you a big snack on the back. He was 6'5 and 200 something. Yeah, I mean, dude. And his hands were like, he, he almost knocked you over. But he was, he was funny. What did his uh, brothers think of his career? <laughs> Competitive. Competitive? I, uh, Milton was the oldest. Milton was as good an athlete as Walter was when I'm baseball yeah. football. And he was a catcher in baseball when he was He probably could have played professional ball. Okay. Instead, he came out of the service, he started a fireworks company. You know, his money ran the household. Yeah. And he would send money home. My wife went to the door, his younger brother, he would stay in the house with his parents to take care of him, and he would send money to keep the house warm. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. And every time they put additions on it, did this or did that. Well, no, the older brother paid for So they would argue a lot about yeah. who was who. The money was, no, the, the fame was, well. Yeah. So, did you ever get a, like, I mean, I think you mentioned something about, uh, did you ever get to meet other players? A lot. Who, yeah? No. But you sat back. Uh, I was going to say that. In Washington, they used to old time game. Yeah. They had it at the old Redskins field. Uh, there wasn't baseball anymore because the baseball team they used to have was called the Washington Senators. Yeah. They were all done. So they would turn the baseball, the football field, into a baseball diamond in the summer. And they would always do this by early July. Yeah. Maybe July 1st. Yeah. And it was, I, I think it was called, I think it was called the Cracker Jack All-Star. You know, the box of Cracker Jack. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what it was called. But all the players would meet the night before at the hotel and they'd have a big, the big uh, social hall. Yeah. We always went with them. But I would, I would find myself sitting here and they're all mingling and talking. Yeah, it's just like. And you, you couldn't just walk over and say, uh, you know, you've been trying to have your audience. Yeah, because it's kind of like. Audience. Audience. Just what doing. Did you ever, like, hear what they were saying about Walt Jopo, like, when they were interacting with them? I, I, had, I had lunch one day with Ted Williams. Yeah. He looked at Walt and he said, if you could hit a curveball, you could still be playing. He used to always make fun of them when he put him in the curve. Yeah. Back Walt Dropo worked with his brothers until he died of natural causes in 2010, just two years after his son's Jeffrey passing in 2008. The Moose for Moose Up will always be remembered as a humble and talented athlete who will live on in the hearts of many. Just like his fireworks job, Walt Dropo's successful baseball career, while short, was glorious and memorable, and it went out in a blink.
with that said, I would like to thank everyone who watched this for viewing this video. A tribute to the famous athlete Walt Drogon.